When you work with sprite-based characters in Unreal Engine, you'll encounter some limitations sooner or later. In the last video I implemented simple beat em up mechanics, but since Paper 2D doesn't have an animation graph or animation notifies, I had to go with a pretty bad workflow of having to manually update which animation should play at each given time. I also had to check on tick which animation is playing and trigger certain actions such as playing footstep sounds or activating attack collisions on the correct frame. This is definitely not a great workflow, however it is manageable if you have a smaller project. But making games is hard enough as it is, so we should try to make things easier wherever we can. Which is why I bought the Paper ZD plugin from the marketplace. I heard a lot of good things about it and it does exactly what I need. Add animation graphs and animation notifies to Paper 2D. There is another highly rated plugin on the marketplace as well, which is called Pixel 2D. I think this also adds animation graphs and notifies, however it also adds many other things that I don't need for my project. Once the plugin is installed and activated, we need to change the parent class of our base character from paper character to paper ZD character. This will allow us to make use of the functionality from the plugin for every actor that is inherited from this. Thanks to the plugin, we can now create animation blueprints for sprite based characters similarly to how we would do this for 3D characters. I couldn't find any documentation on how to use the plugin and there was only one tutorial video by the dev which is a bit outdated. However, everything works pretty simple, so if you have some experience with Unreal Engine, you can just fiddle around with it a bit and you should be able to figure it out. I then started working on the animation graph of the warrior character to first implement the idle animation and the running animation uh, using this system instead of my previous system. For the attack state, I had some issues since my old system was interfering with the animation graph and I needed to find all of the nodes that affected the flipbook state. I was also getting stuck in the attack animation since my boolean for is using attack 1 would never get set to false. So I added an animation notify to set the state on the last frame of my attack animation. This is probably not the ideal way to handle this but for now it will do and I'll think about it later. Next I added an animation notify to play a sound and trigger a hitbox to attack the enemy on the impact frame of our attack animation. I then also added footstep sounds to play from the animation notifies rather than having to check for the animation and frame on tick, which was the last thing I needed to do for the warrior character. Then I just repeated the same steps for the skeleton character as well, so there's nothing interesting to see here. Now the game still functions the same way it did before, however the workflow is much better and it's really easy for us to now work with animation graphs and notifies, just like we would in a 3D game. I then just wanted to implement a simple AI system as well where the enemies simply always follow the player character, however I also ran into some 2D sprite related issues here. First I tried to just make the system the same way I would in 3D and I set up an AI controller, a blackboard and a behavior tree that simply has a move to to the player character. However this will also lead the sprites to also rotate towards the direction they're walking to, which is not an effect that I want. So then I tried to create a small focus actor, which is basically just an invisible sphere that I want to attach to each enemy and have the enemy always look at it. However, that did not quite work out. They started moonwalking around and then things got really weird. In the end, I just used the set focal point function of the AI controller and always forced the character to look at a point slightly in front of itself at all times. And this is the method that actually worked out for me. In the next devlog I will start implementing more combat related things so make sure to subscribe if you want to see how that works out. See you in the next video.